I just learned to not really take things for granted. She really valued my education and outside of sports, that's most important to her. She wouldn't really care too much if I decided to stop playing football at any point. She always let me know that's something no one could ever take from you once you earn that. That's what I'm striving to do. I'm just happy I'm put in a position to accomplish that and take care of that for her. I grew up in Evanston, Illinois, a suburb right outside of Chicago. There's only one high school, so I graduated with like a thousand people. There's like 4,300 people in my high school. Everyone knows each other in the town. Everybody I grew up playing sports with is, you know, I mean, everyone you see around the town, all my good friends now to this day are still all the kids that I kind of grew up with in the community playing sports with. I was kind of back and forth between my mother and my grandmother. My two sisters were with my grandmother. My dad, he was kind of in and out of jail when I was growing up, so he wasn't too much involved in like we're like a living situation. But my grandmother was more of like the take me to practice, take me to my AAU tournaments, take me to my football games. So it was easier to be with her because my mother <laughs> didn't have her license, so she couldn't drive us around. She would go to all the parent teacher conferences though, and she was more about school. So I spent most of my time with my grandmother. She didn't allow me to have much free time. She made sure I was in sports all the time. I started playing football when I was six years old. I was big enough to play when I was five, but I couldn't play because of my age. I grew up not really liking football that much. I was heavily into basketball. I would always be so excited when basketball season came around and then when football came around, she would literally have to fight me and like drag me out of her car to make me go to practice and go to camp. I feel like she kind of guided me to where I am now. In high school, we had a sit-down conversation, and she, <laughs> there's not too many 6'4 centers, you know, that division one playing Division one basketball or in the NBA. So you have to kind of make up your mind, and that's when I took football a little bit more serious, and I kind of pushed basketball to the side and, you know, made football a full-time commitment. My freshman year of high school, my best friend, DJ Coleman, he was killed. I couldn't play sports my freshman year. I was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy. I tried out and I was on varsity as a freshman for basketball, but I couldn't play because the doctors wouldn't clear me to play. So that was, you know, super stressful. I, I kind of just felt like I didn't have any hope at that point. Like I lost my best friend. I, I mean, I love football, I love basketball, obviously, and then I couldn't play sports. I was never a huge school guy. I was out of it, you know, and I put myself in a hole, like academically because I didn't take school serious. I said, hey, like, I don't have anything to look forward to anymore. Like, I didn't know if I was ever going to be able to play sports again. Once that was all taken away from me, it kind of just sent me down like a dark path. I didn't really want anything to do with anyone. Like, in school, like, I didn't talk to anybody in the hallway and outside of school. It was just, I mean, it was, it was a weird time for me because I wasn't used to that. I mean, it took a lot out of me. My grandmother didn't know what was going on. My mom didn't know what was going to happen. I figured, hey, I can't, <laughs> I don't have a sports anymore, well, so now what am I supposed to do? It was hard to get out of it, honestly. Um, I had to spend countless hours, you know, during my lunch periods, after school with teachers, you know, doing extra work to try to get caught up. So I had to do a bunch of second opinions, go to a bunch of different doctors, do like different tests. They had to do readings on my heart to make sure, you know, I wasn't gonna like pass out or anything like that playing. And they figured out after like four or five different tests that my heart's fine. It was just the way that I was born and that it was just something that I was gonna grow into. Coach D'Antonio actually came into my high school a bunch of times and we set up plans to basically get my grades right so I could be able to obtain a scholarship to come to Michigan State. And I had to basically do six summer courses before I could even report to campus. I came to camp late my freshman year and from there, I had to do an academic retro year. I couldn't play at all or dress my freshman year. I was behind the curve a little bit, you know, like I came in late, everyone's like, who's this guy? My freshman year, my camp, I was with Raekwon and I, I would ask him questions daily. Coach Burton yelled at me today at practice. What does that mean for me? <laughs> like, I, I was just so lost. I mean, I was just, I was in a point where like, 
I'm late, you know, I'm a step behind everybody. Now I have to play catch up. Everyone has this kind of perception of me already. Oh, he's the guy that came late, his grades are like, my confidence was low because I was just a little bit behind. I just remember telling him, work on what you can work on, you know, cause it was tough being like, uh, knowing you're able, cause you see him camp and you know he was able to play right away. So I was telling him to work on something every day. You just remain humble, be you. Me and Raekwon, we kind of established that brotherhood right away. I was always talking to Mike, even before like on official visits and stuff like that, because we're all from Illinois. So as far as like the experience and learning from those guys like that really helped me out a lot. As far as building my confidence on and off the field, I never really had like that set father figure in my life. You know, those two guys looking after me and taking me under their wing, I feel like that boosted my confidence. Meet us in the stadium. Meet us in the stadium. Party stadium, man. I was playing Fortnite with Tyler Higby and my sister had texted me twice and I didn't notice, I didn't hear the phone obviously. And um, she said, call me and it's emergency, it's emergency. And I'm like, okay, like, what's going on? Like, I thought maybe it was something like with her cause she's pregnant. And I call her and she's bawling, can't even understand what she's saying. And I'm like, Sky, are you okay? Like, what's going on? Are you okay? And I automatically, I didn't think anything of that. I had talked to my mom like two days before. My sister let me know that they found my mom in her house and she was no longer, you know, she was deceased. And it felt like like my heart like kind of skipped a couple beats. Like, like I, I froze. I didn't know how, I couldn't think. Like I, I literally had lost, like I was numb, like lost all feeling. And it, I just broke down immediately. Um, called my grandmother. My grandmother was, she, you know, it was just such a, a tough time for everybody because you didn't expect that. And it was so, you know, random. So, so it kind of, I mean, it hit home with everyone. Coach Felino came by, he took me on a little drive. Couldn't think about anything else, like, <laughs> My phone was going crazy. Everyone's texting, calling me when they found out the news. And that was something I've never felt like that emotion, that feeling. I've never felt that before in my life. Um, when my when my best friend passed, um, I was obviously depressed about that, super sad. I've lost family members before, but that just kind of, that took peace out of me that I will probably never be able to get back and never a hole that I'll never be able to fill. So that, that definitely impacted me a lot, you know, even to this day. Good, good, good. Stay low, stay low, gotta stay low. We knew that we all, we all needed to reach out and um, link arms because, you know, I had tragedy and, and I remember that helping me when the guys just texting my phone, knowing people care about you, knowing people got your back, knowing it's like a family. That was big for us. We felt like we needed to reach out and at least make them feel comfortable, like uh, I'm your brother. It was uh, a big deal for not just me, but everybody on that team at the time. I'm not the only person who's lost a family, you know, a family member or parent, and I understand that. And I feel like that's most important, just because you never really know what people are going through daily. You know, my mom was fighting with like mental illness and stuff like that. So at least just ask someone how they're doing, and I feel like my teammates do a good job of that. They show sympathy for me. I don't ever really want anybody to baby me or let me use that as an excuse for why I can't play as hard as I can play or why I shouldn't be working as hard as I am. And welcome back for more of our coverage of this year's Michigan State spring football game. Here's a low kick, fielded just inside the end zone. Our last there. spring game, it was the last time my mom got to watch me play. And um, I mean, I remember that forever. There's uh, actually a photo someone took of me reaching up to the stance and my mom's right there. So I'm happy someone was able to get that picture. I feel like it was a blessing. That was like one of the last times I saw her before she passed away. That was the last picture we were able to take together. It makes me kind of emotional just because like, I didn't really, I didn't know if that would be my last time, you know, being able to spend a weekend with my mom. I'm just happy I was able to play in front of her because she hasn't really been able to make it to too many games. 
I mean, it was a blessing some way in itself that she was able to come see me one last time. I'm extremely grateful for that. Miss Sky Jones. Yeah. <laughs> so. Hi. My sister actually delivered her baby two months after my mother's funeral, and she's she's just a blessing that the family needed. Like I, I look at her, and it just brings so much joy to me. And I honestly sometimes like I just look at pictures of her all day. It's just when I'm in a bad mood or videos of her, I'll just Facetime my sister and say, put my niece on the phone. I see your shirt. I miss you too. You miss me? As a big brother, I needed to be strong for them, and I didn't really want to want them to see me breaking down and, you know, being super emotional because I'm supposed to be the support for them. Rain, my niece, she really brings out the happiness in my sister, and that's what they need because, I mean, they're younger than I am, so it probably hit them a little bit harder, and I understand that. They have each other, and she has a daughter that she can love unconditionally and give all her love to and receive it back in the same way. Uh-oh. Ray, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good girl. I love y'all. I'll talk to you later. I love you too. Right. Let's go, let's go. Last first day. When you first came, he didn't have a, as much confidence as he got. Maybe he got too much confidence now, actually. But now, nah, he's never enough confidence. But. Yeah, he's definitely a confident dude now. He's more sure of himself. He knows who he wants to be. That's the biggest difference of seeing him, just the way he interact. He's him now, you know? He's not trying to fit in uh, a, a different way or fit in. He knows who he is, and I feel like that's what that's the biggest thing about college. It, it makes you realize who you are. Since my mother passed, I have a completely different outlook on life. You really need to focus in and pay attention to yourself. Make sure you're doing okay. I feel like if you're in a good place, you're in a good headspace, it'll rub off on the people around you. You don't really know what people go through. That's one of the reasons why I'm always so happy when I come in the building is just because like to be in a leadership role, you know, as a senior, I feel like you have to communicate with everyone at some point. I feel like I want to make everyone comfortable around me. I want to be a guy where you could text or call me and you know, obviously I've experienced something that I can always talk about with somebody, you know, if they if they need to hear it or if they, you know, are in a bad place. I still wake up every day with a smile on my face. I'm so happy to be around people because that's just my personality. I think I'll be like that forever, you know, knowing that I still have that in my heart, that I won't be able to speak to my mother anymore. But I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for everything. I, I'm not saying I'm in the best position I can be, but I know that I could be way worse and I don't take that for granted at all.